Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where your likes, comments, and subs are always greatly appreciated. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the sequence play function of the Zoom R12 multi-track recorder. So what is sequence play? Sequence play allows you to generate a playlist of your projects or songs or even parts of songs, if you want to set it up that way, to play in order with the R12. So you can set up three or four songs in a row if you want to practice. Um, say you're a drummer or you're a singer-songwriter, you want to lay out your songs in a row so you could practice for a live set perhaps, and then you can plug in um, different types of instruments on the inputs there and play along with your playlist that you've created. You could also potentially use it as a backing system for a live setup. So if you have your tracks all set up in a row and you know that you're going to play a certain song list or playlist in order, you could just set everything up, hit the play button, and then go ahead and play along with whatever other instruments that you have set up with your backing tracks that the R12 will handle. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you would set up some playlists with the R12 sequence play, and I can also show you how you would still route in instruments through the inputs while you're playing the playlist and what you can do with effects. To begin, we need to set up a sequence playlist. To start, you'll be on the R12's home screen, and you'll notice at the top there's something called Seek Play. That's what we want to tap, which will bring us to this menu. We can now set up a new playlist because we have new list highlighted, and we can hit the Create button at the bottom. You'll be allowed to title the playlist whatever you want using the keyboard. I will just hit call it this and hit Enter. It says we're done. We've now created the playlist, and we can start to populate it with songs. So we're going to add a project. I have several different um, songs that I made. There's a pocket operator covers of video games, and I shortened the length of them to be only about 12 to 14 seconds long, just so you can get an idea of how the sequence playlist works. So let's add a project. And we could start off by adding the Dr. Wiley Mega Man 2 theme. We'll add that project to the list. Let's add another one. Uh, how about the Super Mario Land N theme? I'll add that. And then finally, we can add the Pokemon Red title screen theme. All right, we've now added our three projects. You'll also notice that we have all these up and down arrows, so we can reorder the playlist however we want by simply hitting those arrows up and down to move the songs into the correct order. Once the project's in place, we can back out. And you'll notice that we have our playlist now created on this Seek Play home screen. And with that, we can hit play. When we do that, you can see the lineup of songs that we have. So I just have three songs here. If we had more, there would be uh, more songs listed below this. Now we've got a couple different options. Um, the top part of the screen will give you the option for fader view or you could see track view, which is really not track view anymore. It's just going to be the lineup of songs you have. So we've got that. We can lock the faders in place if we don't want to mismanage those. We can also change um, if we want to have a metronome playing along with us. And you can also change the input routing. So I have all of these songs set up so that they're just playing off of tracks one and two. But if we wanted to input um, another instrument like a guitar or a synthesizer or something like that, we can do that by routing it to a different track and play it on different tracks as the songs progress through the sequence play. So with that, um, I'll just show you that you can see what it looks like when it's loading. You know you're on sequence play because the play button is flashing. We go back to the screen here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And again, each song is only gonna be about 12 to 14 seconds long. I'll let it play through just so you could see what it sounds like as it goes from one song to the next.
Okay, the list is now done and it returns to just flashing green while it's paused. Another feature that may be of interest to some people is that you can selectively apply effects to some of the songs. So we're in the playlist here, let's back out and let's go back to our projects. When we're in projects, we can go to Super Mario Land N. So we'll just pick that song. I'll open that one up. You can see it's just a stereo track on one and two. I'm gonna select that and then let's select the track settings up here. All right, we're in the track settings. Let's apply an effect. Uh, we've got a send effect here. Let's pick maybe a reverb of Hall 2. We'll back up, um, apply a send effect level somewhere in the 50s, that should be fine. And now we could back out. So we're only going to try to apply the effect when the Super Mario Land song is playing, not for the other ones. Let's go back through our settings. We need to reach the home screen so we can go back to sequence play. And let's load up our playlist once again. Once it's loaded up, now I can play these songs and when it gets to Super Mario Land end theme, I can apply the reverb effect that we had selected and move up the um, send effect levels on it with the slider. So let's hit play. As you can see, the Pokemon Red does not have the reverb effect applied. One of the other things that I want to show you is that while you are in sequence play and you have your lineup of songs available to you, you can use the transport controls to navigate what song is playing. So let's again play this and then I can use the fast forward and re uh, rewind buttons to select the song. Another thing that you can do with your playlist is you could put in timed pauses. So we are in our lineup of songs here. If we back out for a second and go back to the sequence play menu, we can now have that selected and hit edit. When we do that, you'll also see these two little down arrows and those mean that after the song is done playing, it will immediately go to the next song and then down to the next song. What we can do is after the Dr. Wily Mega Man theme, we can hit that arrow and turn it into a pause sign. So if we turn it into a pause sign, it will pause after it plays that song. Go back and hit play for that playlist. And you can see that there's a pause now placed over here. So we have a flashing green light for play. I'll hit play. And as soon as the song is over, it now automatically pauses before we get to the Super Mario Land song where I can hit play once again. Another thing that we could do with the playlist if you create several of these is that we can color code them so you can easily identify them quickly. While your playlist is selected, you can hit the color button down at the bottom and now choose one of the couple different colors that they have available to you and set it up however you want. So now our playlist is color coded to be something else if we want. You can easily identify your playlists that way. And the last thing that I want to demonstrate is that you can route different instruments through the R12 while the playlist is playing. In order to do that, we would go to play and we can choose, oh, the next song, the Super Mario Land song if we want. And while we're here, select the mic icon and now let's route inputs one and two onto tracks three and four. So we've got those set up and let's move our faders up to three and four so we can actually hear something coming out of there. And now we'll back out. 
and go back to our playlist. And as you could see, I'll zoom out here a little bit. I've got an inputs one and two. I've hooked up my Roland J6 synthesizer. So I'll play this and then when I get to the Super Mario Land song, I should be able to play the Roland along with it. But you'll notice when I'm on the Pokemon Red song, I can no longer play it because I did not set up that particular song to have my inputs routed to a different track. So if, as long as you set it up for whatever track routing setup you need for each individual song, as the playlist goes through, you will be able to play along with it. So as you can see, the sequence play option on the R12 might be a great feature for some people if you're looking for a practice instrument or you wanna use something to play backing tracks when you're out there on a live show. The sequence play feature is only available on the R12 right now. So this R12 is on firmware 2.3. Uh, the cousin instrument, the Zoom R20, the larger multi-track instrument is on firmware version 3.3. And that one does not have sequence play. I don't know if Zoom is planning on bringing the sequence play feature over to the R20. Um, it seems like something that could happen in a software update, but I have no idea if they're going to do that or if they just plan on leaving sequence play here with the R12 because of its portability factor. It could run off batteries, it's easy to carry around, and it is something that you could potentially bring to a live gig. So that's all I really wanted to cover in this video. You could let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to address those in a timely fashion. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. All right, goodbye.